Hello, everybody. It's up on February 22nd. Trips and Traps, Andy Serling, Eric Dom. Three races to bring you this week from the four race card uh, last week. And uh, we'll start off by taking a look at the seventh race from the 15th. This is a, a state bread allowance optional claimer for three year old fillies going a mile. Yeah, hang on with the break be for a second before you show it. I want to focus on four horses. The four five, six, seven. All of these were potential speeds. And the brakes are very important and particularly focus on the six and seven because the rider of the six who had the absolute speed came out as though the last thing in the world he wanted to do was have the lead. The rider of the seven who had clearly a horse fast enough to get the lead couldn't take him back fast enough. And even the rider of the four on the inside, a speed, he's taken him back too. So what happens is a horse that wasn't the fastest of the four speeds, but might have been the slowest of the four speeds, ends up walking on the front end and easily wiring the field. You missed the point. Uh, in her last race prior to this one, went a, a quarter and 25 and one and a half and 50 and three. You had sprinters stretching out in here. You had uh, you know horses that had been the distance that had gone faster in their prior races. So uh, of the four, you would expect her not to get the easy lead here. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting with fans. A lot of the fans are, are appreciative of the discussion. We have a lot of discussions, and we've had them on the show about uh, the unaggressive riding we've seen a lot here this winter. And then you have some people that are sort of saying, why are you talking about it? Why are you doing it? Well, we're talking about it because here's, here's the six who's under a hold. Here's the four. And the seven at this point is behind the one. If they ran a straightaway, this, the one couldn't get within four lengths of the, of the seven. Yet he's behind them. And they wonder about, well, we're talking about it because the races are being changed because of the running style here. And you look on paper and you think, okay, there's a reasonable amount of speed. It should, you know, help horses that are closing or there's no speed. But it just seems as though the riders are so averse to being on the lead. And yet we've had a winter where a rider named Jalissa Laredo has said one improbable long shot to the lead after another. And miraculously, these horses have won. And you would think somebody would take notice and say, hey, you know, speed's not necessarily the worst thing in the world. No, it's not indeed. And, uh, you know, just very surprised sometimes when you see races like this unfold where, you know, you see there's more than two speeds in the race. You're expecting a fair pace. And then the horse that you would think that, you know, would be in the worst position is in the best position. And the horse that you would think on the lead, the seven, is five months back. Yeah, it's a little too late to be riding the seven. The time to ride the seven was at the start of the race to get position. And then once you get position, maybe you can dictate the race a little bit. But once you put yourself in a chase, I, I don't understand the mentality of sprint type speed horses stretching out. Why would you want to rate them? These are horses that are horses that want to be forwardly placed. The the likelihood of them getting the distance rating behind slow paces is just about nil. And so what happens is a horse appears much better than it is. Now, the winner of this race missed a point. With all due respect, she is as dressed up as a horse can be off of two very, very slow paces. But you have to credit the rider, K. Barcoa, because he's taken advantage of the non-aggression of the other riders. And I'm not saying you need to have four horse duels, but it just seems as though far too often riders have determined what they want to do before the race has started, as opposed to coming out of the gate looking for position. And if the pace is faster, maybe you tuck in, put some separation in the field. But once they're all grabbing, one guy goes, well, the other guy's a grab. I'll go, and they'll let me have the lead. And it's worked over and over again. It has indeed. And the, and the hard part for fans and, and the racing public is you just don't know going into the gate what's going to be what. And that, you know, that's that's tricky. It makes the race kind of uh, a lot tougher to play. I agree. And it's and it's not it's not whining and it's because. I don't even. I don't think I've met this race. I like the horse who was second, actually, in there. But uh, but it's it's a question of watching the race and trying to handicap them. And it just feels as though a lot of horses aren't getting their best chances to win. You don't know how these races would play out. But it's not impossible if some of the speeds in here had been ridden a little, a little more aggressively. Maybe they would have won the race. And we've seen some races. Natalie Victoria, an aggressive ride last week, goes to the front, assumes control, and wins. Aggressive riding is being rewarded. Unaggressive riding is being punished. And we'll take a look at the seventh race now from February 16th. Not so much of an issue in this race with the pace, but just uh, trips in general that a uh, few of the key contenders got. Yeah, well, this is a disaster. And some of it's the start to talk about. But we're going to focus in on the one who finished second and probably should have won. The two who finished, I think, third or fourth and maybe was best. And the five, a first-time starter who, uh, who had nothing but trouble uh, in this race and is an interesting horse to follow going, going forward. Yeah, and you'll take a look here as they uh, go into the first turn. Uh, the uh, horses uh, toward the back of the pack are all horses that uh, were, were interested in. The one on the rail, uh, the two is in behind horses. You can see the five uh, Vizier, a horse that gets a little rank in between horses and starts to uh, push out some of the other ones a little bit here. And uh, Vizier is going to end up going uh, into a wide spot uh, around as they approach the back. Yeah, Vizier is a funny horse. Took some money in this race too, Eric, you know. 
and just never had a fair chance in here. Um, the two horse is not a dissimilar trip to the one we saw before when lost position early, and here are the three horse at the back of the pack, and for whatever reason, whether it's the horse or the rider, this horse made a crazy early move. You see the two steading there as Vizier moves forward. The 176 just gets completely shuffled out of the race. Completely shuffled out, and you have Wise God making this premature move, and uh, on the outside, Vizier is, uh, you know, hung out in no man's land also. You know, I think with Wise Guide here, the, the, the thing to do next time is just try to send him, try to get position, because this is twice in a row where he's kind of made this middle move, this wide middle move in the back stretch that you know is not going to lead to anything but uh, disappointment in the end, and, uh, you know, maybe it's time to change tactics with him a little bit. I think it's time to change riders, to be perfectly honest. I can't believe they okay. rode him back after that ride. Here's the one who's in the process of getting shuffled out. His Vizier, who's out in the middle of the racetrack and just loses all chance. Vizier had this nightmare trip. It might be a firster to take a look at next time after finishing last and run better. The two wise guys, people say it's a tough horse to ride. I'd like to see how tough it is to ride with a rider with a higher percentage. This is crazy. I mean, this is this is just, as you said, if you left for position early, these things wouldn't happen. It's the same discussion from before, Eric. It's leaving for position so you don't get caught in these. Here's 76 finally getting untangled, making a big run. Vizier is out in no man's land. And here's the two, also out in no man's land, wise guy. I think Eric Wise guy ran the best race of anybody, even though as things turned out, 76 probably should have won. And the winner gets this unbelievably great ride and, and perfect trip. Yeah, the winner comes, uh, saves the ground, comes through between horses there, splitting horses right now. Two off the rail to uh, get the victory here. That's call for the clock. And uh, we'll see uh, the uh, one horse 76 make a good rally on the outside. The uh, two wise guy, a little Logging bit tired in, in the stretch. Logging in, but, uh, you know, his race was run uh, on the back stretch. Yeah, well, same thing as last time you ran. And these horses have all, I mean, we've shown these horses a few times here on Trips and Traps. And, you know, you do have to ask the question, is the horse part of the problem here? But I don't know. It just, it feels like nothing worked out for these horses. And, and, and you know, 76 was just a bit unlucky from the inside. But I do think that part of the lesson is, you know, if you're, I know this field looks so they were going quickly early, but they did go 24 and 2, 49 and 2. So they weren't exactly blazing. And I think if you had guys that were a little more aggressive out of the gate, it's not that the pace is going to be 23 46, mm -hmm. but it's going to make a little bit of separation in the field. And Richie Migliori talks about this, and he was a rider. And the separation is going to not put, allow horses to not be put in trouble and getting shuffled back because the slow paces are just pushing the fields together, tightening up the packs, and making it so there's always trouble in there. Well, you saw the break when we showed it to you. The three horses that broke poorest were the one, two, and, and five, and they ended up with the worst trips. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting. And we're talking, and a friend of mine was talking about this the other day, uh, horse race races are won and lost at the break more than any other point. And, and that's one of the reasons you have to come out. And listen, sometimes horses will get left, and there's nothing a rider can do about it. It's not that's it's unfair to blame horses that are breaking slowly necessarily. And the rider, though, sometimes you'll see some riders that get left more than others, on the other hand. But boy, the break is an important time. And it's important, I think, to be get as Richie likes to say, getting your position going forward. Well, we'll see how important the break is in our next race. It's the sixth race from February 18th. The special weight for New York Reds uh, going a mile and 70 yards for three-year-old fillies. Well, here's a case where LaBella Chabella was clearly the speed in this race. And we want to show you the break. It seems like she breaks about a step slow. But after that, you know, she comes in. The rider gave her a little tap on the right. And she just gets pinballed around in here. But as a result, and you're going to see the eighth horse, whose rider, Kai Marcoa, is doing a good job getting the horse over. If the three is up front where he's supposed to, be. Co is able to get to the inside and there's more separation because there's a faster pace and you're going to see it more in this and boy is the eight horse current event who finishes fourth is absolutely horribly hampered. Here's the three in there getting in trouble. You'll see that more and there's current event and I think the camera was really doing the right thing with this horse and he's a really unfortunate recipient of circumstance. Yeah he ends up being bothered by LaBella Trabella, a horse that's used to being in the lead so you know when she goes into the turn uh, she's a little bit rankier being behind horse and she's going to want to get out a little bit. That force is current event to be out a little bit and that forces current event into a wide position the whole race and with a horse bothering her the whole way too much less and here they are back here and you can see labelle and Jamella. they went 24 and 249 and one if labelle and Jamella's in front they're probably going 24 and 48 and three there's a little more separation the eight's down towards the inside, has a much more comfortable trip, and I think that Cole was victimized by his post and what happened with the three. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right in here. I mean, and, and the three, you know, had that trouble at the start to, to tamper things even more uh, with the with the eight horse current event. We'll see the seven uh, sole opposition, another horse that makes a wide move. Really, it's a race that you know kind of highlights wide moves here because you see the uh, five horse coming up outside the one. That's the eventual winner, physical delivery, and you'll have the uh, seven horse sole opposition is also there. So it wasn't so 
still bad to be wide, but it's bad to be wide and not in position. No, I agree. And this is, you know, it, you keep going back to it. I, you know, Cohen now, he, he's got to send the eight for an event, and I get why he's doing it, because he's got to get in the race. They're going slowly. If they're going to quicken up front, he finds himself five lengths beyond top of the stretch. He's got no chance. And all of it happens, really, because LaBella Chabella doesn't come out of the gate cleanly, bounced around, and isn't sent aggressively to the lead. Whatever the case and reason for LaBella Chabella, the fact that she wasn't going forward at the start and moving the race forward put a horse that could have been in a very good spot by a rider who had a plan coming out of the gate, was in, was in process of, of executing it, and Instead, at the start, all heck breaks loose. Yeah, I mean, you see the eight uh, still trying to fight on here toward the end as a current event uh, misses this race by you know, about a length and three quarters, uh, something like that, uh, the final margin. And you see the horses that had sort of more inside trips and that put themselves in the first position earlier in the race. They're the ones who end right. up running one, two. And I think their riders did a good job doing it, but it's the way the dynamics of the race flow. It was indeed. It was more of a dynamics position there than in terms of the actual wide position, because as we said, you did see the five and the seven make the wide moves just a little bit earlier than the horses that uh, were the horse that we were talking about, the eight uh, current event. Yeah, and I think it's fascinating to take these races apart, and you especially see it in the two turn races, because there have been situations where we probably should have cast some bets with some of these horses by paying attention to this. There's money to be made, and we can always use your help in doing so. Trips and traps at MyRaInc.com. Thanks for watching.